This connection of churches has a strong passion for mission. That passion was recognized by Bishop Neil Irons during his term. He thought it would be wonderful to create a centralized location that would facilitate mission education, outreach, and disaster response. One year after introducing the idea, the conference opened the Mission Central Warehouse in Mechanicsburg. Thank you so much for coming, Bishop Irons. You're welcome. Where did the idea and the vision of creating a mission warehouse come from? Well, I, I like to think it initially came from God, but I, I think it comes from paying attention not only to what God asks us to do, that is, you can't do ministry without mission, but to also look at the people among whom you live uh, to see what they have a readiness to do. Mm -hmm. and. And the people in Pennsylvania are incredible when it comes to giving to mission. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of having a centralized mission location? Well, I, I think it helps if, if you have something that's tangible. Mm -hmm. So often mission seems to be something that's done over there or here. But when you have a center, into which people could come for education and in which they can also do hands-on ministry, all of a sudden mission takes on faces mm. and purpose. And, and I think having it in a central location in the middle of, of the people, so to speak, uh, gives it strength to all of us. Mm. These were the original ideas for and the plans for the centralized mission location. However, that's not what ended up being the building. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how God pl changed those plans? Well, I, I think maybe. We always think smaller than God does. Mm -hmm. uh, so after this vision came, we put together a committee of people of all kinds of abilities and ask them to think what it would look like to have this center for mission. So what you see on the screen is what we had come up with. And, and so that was how we were moving ahead. Then all of a sudden, I'm driving to my office, go past this building, and I see that it's for rent. I mentioned that to my council director. Next thing I know, he's checking it out, and suddenly other people are involved and this building had everything we wanted except more of it. And it was of God. As I said, it was bigger than, than we were thinking. I think that's the way it always is with God. It was almost double the square footage. Yes. Are, are those extra spaces being used today? Oh, I, <laughs> I'd invite anybody to come in to Mission Central. Uh, every corner of this building is used for something. And every time I come, there are new things there. So it, it's a building that just keeps adapting to the unfolding mission that's before us. I know that you had said before when we were talking that you think that one of the things that you've done right with Mission Central and that everyone that's been involved in the project has done is to be really open to um, the other missions that you're working with. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the other missions that do work with Mission Central? Well, uh, early on, uh, we were looking at some of the uh, food programs uh, in, to outreach from the Harrisburg area. So we were involved with those. We've been involved with uh, I think fire departments where uh, furniture may be needed in case of a family being burned out. Uh, we need all of this space to ship items overseas. Uh, frankly, there are so many things going on here. I don't know nearly the, the entire list, but it's simply that it, it just keeps expanding and, and our partners grow in numbers. What are some of the God moments that you've heard of of Mission Central? Oh, I, well, uh, what, what are the early God moments that, that we often tell because it's such an incredible story is uh, Harry Overholter uh, was at that time the director here and he got this call from one of the area hospitals asking if we could use some bones. He didn't know what that meant, nor did the rest of us. So when he made inquiry of them, uh, they said, well, these are bone fragments that have been used in surgery where 
people have been damaged and they insert these so that the people's own bone would grow around it. So Harry calls uh, a member of this conference who chairs a hospital in India to see if that hospital has use for them. And they said, oh yes, we never have enough of those. So here was something that we were no longer using in the United States that all of a sudden was vital in a place like India. And, and suddenly there was this connection between here and, and a far off country. God saw the connection. We had to figure it out. But when the opportunity came, it was taken. It's wonderful. There are so many God moments that have happened here uh, throughout the past 10 years. Uh, where do you see Mission Central going in the future? Well, th I think that's a very hard question to answer because at the beginning we said we're just going to leave ourselves open to whatever God asks us to do. So I think certainly we'll continue to be involved in uh, disaster relief, will continue to be involved in mission education, which helps also when people come in to volunteer to participate in mission. But missions across my years keeps changing because the world keeps changing, needs keep changing. Where it will be 10 years from now, I don't know, but I do believe that it will be right. Thank you so much for sharing. Mission Central is celebrating its 10-year anniversary. And if you would like to find out how you can help by volunteering or donated item, donating items, please check out my blog at susquehannaexpress.blogspot.com. <laughs>